people miss on Patrick Mahomes? Um, I didn't. Did you know that? I'm a huge Justin Herbert fan. I am. You know, I think the first thing is, I think he's got the best arm out of any of these quarterbacks in the draft. No offense to Sam Darnold. He's a really good player, and he's got a lot of playmaking ability, but there's no way he deserves to be the first pick of the draft or the fourth pick of the draft for my for my money. Who does? So, I, um, I think the best quarterback in the draft is Lamar Jackson. Yes, I know the completion percentage is going to concern people. Yeah, he didn't get to throw 12 screens a game like Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield, where he got to go 12 for 12 with throws that didn't go beyond the line of scrimmage. March 2018 NFL draft right up uh, until the draft. You said that your uh, power rankings, you had Lamar Jackson number one overall. Man, you took a lot of heat when you uh, said that on this show, but uh, you still feel that way. Probably feel even stronger today, don't oh, you? Oh, Chris, you're an idiot, Chris. You're an <laughs> idiot. The right, only reason you got this job is because you're dad. <laughs> so, so is that receipts? That's receipts. Is that is that is that that's what they're that telling me on social media? They they're saying I got receipts, right? And I cashed them in. Now that's so, that's is, uh, is that that's a, what a, that's bo- what I'm a body of work. It's a body of work. Is that so. credibility? You know, like, like okay, all right, that's not that's not bad. That's not bad. Well, um, hey, that, that, that's, a, that's that's like batting a thousand. That's that's batting a thousand. Do you have any misses? And, I, and I'm not trying to like offset it. I'm saying like that's a pretty that's a hell of a track record. Do you have any any ones that you like to have back when it comes to oh, quarterback evals? Definitely, definitely. Listen, and you know, I, sometimes I can get carried away with what I do on social media. I get competitive, and then you know, l- listen. If I'm not going to stick up for me, who the hell is? All right. So I I, I do fight Speak fire on it, with fire every now and then. But no, definitely some misses right off the bat. Daniel Jones of the Giants. I'll tell you, I had some other guys in front of him that are not in the class of him. I messed that one up. I'm still pissed off about Dak Prescott. I mean, I went back to the lab, the, the, the lab with a pen and the pad and tried to get the damn label off. I was pissed about that <laughs> as far as like, let me, <laughs> let me see what I did wrong. Let me self scout thyself. And you know, that was one where I fell into the trap of, oh, well, you know, they didn't win and the stats weren't always that great. And hey, the hell with all that crap. I mean, yeah, he was on the lesser team on the field a lot of the times there in the SEC. So those are, you know, you're gonna miss in this business doing this stuff. Certainly, uh, I yeah, of course, of course. It, like you guys know, and I'm I'm uh, I'm passionate about what I do. All right, but no, but so, it's, it's a, you're gonna you're gonna miss. But I'm serious. That's an incredible run that right? we're on Thanks, here. So, uh, thank you. Michael Holly is a uh, is your your biggest fan right now. So take it away, Michael. I know where you want oh, to start. Oh, definitely. We, we're gonna get there in a second. I just want to say, since we're family and we we share some things here, um, give us a little peek. Just give us a little, like, top of the top eh, of the eh, uh, system. This is a peak. Eh, give eh, a little eh. bit. Uh, uh. <laughs> Stevie Wonder, one of the greatest ever. Just let him see for a little bit. All right. So give us a little peek into your process. Like, how do you, what do you start with, and how do you uh, kind of build this? I don't want to give away, I don't want you to give away your system, but just give us a little bit of insight. No, I think the first thing I always do is I look at the good, okay? I just go, let me see what they're capable of, right? I think that's important. So let me watch some plays that are impressive and do all of that. Then I start to watch games, true games. I want to see every throw from every game, and I go through that that way. And I'm always going to go at the end and go, okay, let me see the worst. Let me watch the absolute worst, too, and kind of dissect that. And... That's kind of where I go. And then as you guys know, too, listen, part of evaluating the quarterback, it's more than wins and losses and yards and everything like that. You got to ask yourself at times, like with a Justin Herbert or some of the things with Patrick Mahomes when I thought he was the best quarterback in the draft, where I just went, listen, this was a bad game, but is it his fault? I don't see anybody open. Mm -hmm. He's not being protected. What are we expecting and asking of this guy? And to you know, re- realistically n- give him a negative in those situations, that's where I go, wait, th- th- that's not fair. He's not in a position to succeed. So I-, I try to be realistic with those expectations. And then the next thing I do, Michael Holly, is, you know, I- of course, I evaluate the-, the-, the player itself, just the talent. All right. 
Can he take advantage of what's there to be had? Hey, there's a 10 yard out route. Does he hit it every time? Is it always a bullseye? And then you guys have heard me say this before, because when we talk about NFL quarterbacks, then I want to see, hey, when nothing's there and things are bad, what are you going to do to make it better? And to me, that's where the Josh Allens and the Mahomes and the Rodgers of the world are so special because there are so many plays I watch of them every year where I go, whoa, protection's bad, nobody's open, well, oh, doesn't matter, they kind of got out of trouble, and zoom, there's a 40-yard laser, and they make the play happen. So I'm big into that process uh, right there. That's great. I love that. And, and so tell us how Zach Wilson, my man, Zach Wilson, Mike Smith, how Zach Wilson was able to overtake Trevor Lawrence for the number one spot in the Chris Sims rankings. I love it. How to happen? Yeah, well, well I, first off, I, I, I like Trevor Lawrence a lot. Okay, so this is not an indictment on him. He is worthy of being a number one pick in the NFL draft. And really, with Jacksonville and where he's from in the country, he's from Georgia, played in South Carolina, Clemson, right? You know, he's huge in that region. Urban Meyer's there. I expect it to be a college type offense. I'm expecting Trevor Lawrence to still be the number one pick. But I think Zach Wilson is the best quarterback in, in this draft. I do. And I, I do think there's a little bit of a gap there. And it really goes into a lot of what I just told you, what it broke down. First off, the talent just pops off the screen. I mean, it's, it's Rodgers, Mahomes, Farvish, and what he does. You know, he doesn't, one, he's a consistent thrower. Two, he has the quickest release in the draft. You know, three, um, he can throw from awkward angles and doesn't need space in the pocket. So when the pocket is collapsed and there's no room to throw, he can still be like zoom and throw a 40 yard laser down the middle. And then it becomes the off schedule stuff, guys, that I get really impressed with. You know, he, he, he's a very good athlete. He's got phenomenal feet. And when he gets out of the pocket, he's not looking to run. He's looking to let me buy some time like Mahomes or Josh Allen or Rogers and let me find a way to throw a 40 yard laser and he only will run when he goes, okay, there's eight guys way down there and they triple dog dare me now to run it and he can rip off 20, 30 yard runs too. So that's what I love about him. He's NFL pro ready. He's a good decision maker. You see him go through reads and process information really well. And I really don't see any flaws in his game other than maybe I wish he was a hair bigger but he's still young and I think he is going to get bigger and thicker. I like his legs and the way his legs and butt look. I'm a big legs and butt guy. Okay. And they look athletic and <laughs> the way too. he moves. So yeah, me he's too, a superstar sure. to me. Yeah. I knew we Mike had a Smith, lot of You just say me yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm definitely a, yeah. In, 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 in several contexts. Uh, <laughs> me too. I, I'm the same way. Um, <laughs> honestly, the, the Zach Wilson over Trevor Lawrence, that wasn't the thing for me. Like, I mean, that didn't surprise me. I mean, we, we've been talking about yeah. Trevor Lawrence a lot. You've kind of alluded to it. Uh, it, it, it there's a lot of people in, the, you know, you, you, not a lot. The consensus still seems like it's Lawrence, but there are people right. that you've seen anonymously tout Zach Wilson. So that's, that's not what stood out. I intentionally avoided you, Chris, since yesterday, because I want to hear for the first time, I want to hear Kellen Mond. That's what I yeah. that's who I want to hear about. That was the one right. that jumped out on the list for me, having him ahead of both Fields uh, and Trey Lance. Um, so yes, Kellen Mond, man. I mean, I'm familiar with his work, but I certainly didn't expect to see him right in the mix with these other uh, premier prospects or the, or the much more hype prospects. So break down his right, tape right. for us. I, yeah, and, and I didn't expect to either. I don't go into this with any preconceived notions. I'm a very col I mean, very casual college football watcher during the year. You guys know I'm all into the yeah. NFL. I can't be sitting there on Saturday all day long watching college football too. I do like my kids and my wife and everything like that. So <laughs> I, I didn't like expect it. He is the, the surprise of me, of everybody. I'll say this, and I got to give my dad, Big Phil, I got to give him credit. Because during the year, he kept going, hey, Christopher, Christopher, you seen this Texas A&M kid? And then when I started to evaluate the quarterbacks, he kept, hey, did you watch the Texas A&M quarterback yet? And as I got into it and I started to watch, of course, I texted my dad back and I went, whoa, dad, you, you, you're right here. This kid's got some really elite traits to his football game. First off, he is 
got a phenomenal arm. Again, quick release, good decision maker, plays in the pocket, is in an NFL type-ish offense there in Texas A&M under Jimbo Fisher. And every throw is on the button, on the money. I mean, it really is. It's perfect spirals, and he does it in under pressure with people around him. And I really looked at him, and I just went, wait, they lost one game of, for all the stats and wins and people of the world, all right, you know, which I don't ever bring up. He, he lost one game, and he went 19 touchdowns, three interceptions, and in his bad games, he played the right way, and they still won. Like, he had a rough day against LSU. There were some drop passes. LSU's got talent. They, you could tell they had a little beat on the offense. They were doubling certain guys and doing things like that, and it was rough. But he played within himself and didn't mess the game up or compound it more. But I'm more amazed with just his ability to make throw after throw within the pocket, and he's a really good athlete. My only negative with him is, I wish he would play backyard football a little bit more and get out of the pocket and do those things. And, you know, he kind of has a real traditional sits there and throws it like that, right? Okay, you know, everything else in his technique is absolutely perfect without me getting in too into the weeds here with that. And that, like, between getting out there and playing backyard fu football and fixing maybe just being a little robotic, those are easy fixes. We saw Aaron Rodgers coming to the league yeah. and holding the ball like this, right? He'll get relaxed and loose and get with the right coach, and they'll go, hey, man, let it, you know, chill out a little bit. Let that thing fly around that way. You're too talented. But I love everything about Kellen Mond, and I think the NFL world, or at least the guys that follow the draft and all that, are really sleeping on this guy. Now, you want me to get to Justin Fields now? Yeah, no, I was just going to yeah. say on Mond, it's funny. Yeah, go if, ahead. If they would have go gotten, if they, if they would have actually gotten to, no, it's just an observation. If they would have actually gotten yeah. into the college football playoff, and not to say that it would have gone any differently, uh, you know, than it did for, um, uh, for Notre Dame, but if they'd have gotten into the college football playoff, maybe more people would have seen him on a bigger stage. Right. Not that that's, right. SEC is a small conference, of course, but on an even bigger stage and been more hype about it. But go ahead. Go ahead on, on fields if you want. But agreed. I, I mean, they're flying under the radar there in Texas A&M in general. And then, you know, I don't know how highly of a touted recruit he was coming out of high school. You know, listen, sometimes the hype machine starts and sometimes it doesn't. And it just, you're like, well, why? Why did it start for this guy and it doesn't start for that guy? I don't know. I don't have the answers to that. But he was like the shocker of all these guys. Fields has some elite traits. He's a first-round quarterback. He is built like a Greek god. He's built like Cam Newton, except he's two inches shorter. His running is phenomenal. His arm is explosive. I mean, when he pieces it all together, you go, whoa, like what a damn throw that is. I think what worries me a little bit about Justin Fields is it's a little bit of a, hey, one read, ooh, that guy's not open, and then he looks to run, or if nobody is open, there can be some reckless decisions at times within that. And listen, these things are fixable. They definitely are. But, but here's my biggest concern. When the throwing falls apart with him, he has some real technical issues in how he throws the football, both in the upper body and the lower body, to where when it gets bad, it gets real bad. He, you know, he was the worst short ball thrower out of all these guys. There's too many... What I would just go, this should be a slam dunk completion, and the ball and the receiver can't even get, you know, a hand on it. And these are some of the you know, these are some awesome receivers we're talking about. So to me, he's just a little bit more, you know, of a work in progress. He's a guy that I would love to see, like, again, in a situation, a perfect world, this probably might not happen now. I'd love to see him go to the Pittsburgh Steelers and be behind a big big Ben Roethlisberger for a year. Just that type of scenario where he can clean up some of those mechanical things yeah. because the talent is there. Yeah. You know, now it's going to be about the pro day and the guy itself. Do you believe in the guy? Is he willing to work? You know, and let's see the pro day and maybe did he fix some of those technical issues and is he capable of continuing that onto the football field? The top end talent is real good. It's just like I talked about in the evaluation process. The bad is is bad, and that's that's what worries me a little bit. You know, my last one for you, Chris. We saw 
Um, we saw Sam Darnold in that montage over the years. You said, hey, all respect to uh, Sam Darnold. He's not the best quarterback in this class. Uh, I think it's Lamar Jackson. You went down a list. Now you look at Sam Darnold, and it looks like he's going to be replaced by Zach Wilson unless the Jets have something else up their sleeve. But Joe Douglas seemed pretty clear that, hey, I'll listen. So if you're listening on Sam Darnold, I just based on what you've seen, and it's hard. I mean, he's been with the Jets. They haven't had a lot around him. It's, it's, it's a dysfunctional franchise. We know that. What would you give up to get Sam Darnold? And what do you think his future is in the next couple of years if he's in a decent situation? Right. I'm still a believer in Sam Darnold. I am. I, I think he could still be a really good NFL starting quarterback and be successful and you can win games and go to a Super Bowl with him. I'm not giving up hope on this guy. I'm really not. You know, yeah, I never saw the special high end talent that maybe some others saw. You know, I, I did. I thought Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson were the crown jewels of, of that draft class. But, you know, as you mentioned, Holly, I mean, when you're surrounded by crap all the time, you know, you're going to get crap on your arm and you're going to smell like crap. That's what I always say to Florio. It's just not always easy to overcome <laughs> that. He's had no help. Now, you know, the, the trade process, first off, if he gets offered out there and teams do that, you know, that's going to hurt the value of the overall trade because, of course, teams are going to go, well, you're, you're going to take a quarterback at number two. So I don't know if they can get a second, third rounder. I'm going to say it's something along those lines, you know, for Sam Darnold. I would say probably they could still pull off a second rounder. And if he went to a place... Like, you know, let's say Robert Sala and Mike LaFleur, who just came from the 49ers, they take Zach Wilson, which I would say, like, listen, if Zach Wilson's there, you sprint to the podium and go, oh, here you go. Here's Zach Wilson. Um, I think he could go to the 49ers and be in that Shanahan offense and still be really successful, successful and really good. And, and listen, even if the Jets decide to keep him and they can put a little talent and with this system, I do think he fits the Shanahan, Mike LaFleur system. So I'm not giving up on him, but I do think that Zach Wilson is special enough to where, yeah, I'm sorry to say it. I, I would look to trade, you know, Sam Donald at some point. Before we get you out of here, I um, want to bring you in on a little back and forth that we had earlier. Um, yeah. So obviously you've heard the news. Ben Roethlisberger is back in Pittsburgh for an 18 season. We got off into a tangent about the 04 draft. So back then you weren't evaluating quarterbacks. Oh, by the way, little note, uh, little, little housekeeping real quick. And I didn't I didn't know this either. I'm with you. I'm a casual college football person, not knee deep into recruiting. Um, but uh, I was just told uh, that Kellen Mond was the number one dual threat quarterback coming out of high school, according to rivals. Uh, he was above. Good. That's good to hear. Two. Okay. So he was so I don't, know, I don't know yeah. where the hell so, the hype is around him. What the hell is everybody watching? Because the film is real good and clean, and he's got talent. So let's start paying attention. They go, to him. They're going to be go on ahead. it now. Man, Michael Smith. Yeah. Rank the 04 first round quarterback class, uh, not including um, my man from Tulane uh, that went to. Uh, yeah. Uh, J.P. Lawson to, uh, to Buffalo. J.P. Lawson, yeah, the the, the right. three premier guys at the top. Rank them, because uh, for me it goes Ben Rivers, Eli. Ooh. Rank those three. It, ben is clearly number one to me. I will say that. I mean, Ben is yep. a Ben went through a part of his career where he could carry the team, like he was the team. I mean, do you you remember back in like you know 08, 09, 10, 11? They were like the worst offensive line in football, but it didn't matter because Big Ben was running around like Fred Flintstone in the pocket and he had people around him and he was just oh, throwing the ball down the field. I mean, he's a phenomenal talent that way. So I would go one with him. Rivers had better regular seasons on average compared to Eli Manning. But of course, Rivers lacks any memorable playoff wins or playoff moments. So that's where I think, I, you know, as much as his regular season uh, play, I do think was better than Eli. Man, it's hard to ignore those two damn runs that Eli made. I mean, Eli, you say what you want. He clutches hell. Nothing affected him. I mean, they, you know, they could be, boo, you suck, Eli. And he just, well, throw the ball around. It didn't matter. You know, he just, it never affected him. And I give him credit for that, certainly. So I guess I'm saying is I'd probably put Eli just a smidgen ahead of, of Phillip Rivers. 
And those two wins, okay. and not only those two wins, fellas, but those two wins against the premier team of the of the decade, or maybe of the of the of the decade, Ever. Yeah. you know, two decades. Right, <laughs> right. He, al- oh, yeah. he, he, al- he altered he altered history. Homeboy would have no nine. Doubt. If not for Eli Manning, you know, so no doubt. All right. Hey, yeah. we appreciate you, brother. Way to way to put in work. Um, Great stuff. Thank you for Love the low hanging fruit this week. The moment we got your Thanks. list, we were like, oh, <laughs> it's like content. No problem. Fodder. Put it on my tab, baby. Put it on my tab. No we problem. We got you. I'm going to beat you to it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it, man. Peace out. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.